Five things to look for when looking for love. Hello ladies, this video is for you. And today we're gonna to talk about five important things to look for when looking for love from a man. How you doing? My name is Coach Andres, head coach of Alexander Cormand at the French Relationship Expert. And thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. And before we get started, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button. Please hit a like button if you like this video and share it and leave a comment during it because I would love to hear your input. So five things to look for when looking for love. Well, you know, it's interesting because I think the initial approach of looking for love sometimes can be confusing. And what I mean by that is that there's a lot of boys disguised as a man. <laughs> and let me be clear. Uh, it's more of the fact that regardless their age, regardless their status, they still have boyish mental tendencies. They're not mature emotionally, or they don't allow themselves to grow up emotionally. You know, they're still in that selfish ways of my way, selfish intentions, selfish actions, you know? It's not really about ever giving. It's all about, I have this and you're gonna take that. And that's not really a formula for a healthy relationship regardless their status or their age. It sounds like a very immature relationship, actually a one-way relationship. So, I mean, even though all the things on the outside, the exterior check off, and those things are great things to have in a sense, but that shouldn't be the foundation of the relationship because you really didn't take the time to look in the inside. What checks off in the inside? The character, the soul, the spirit, the, ten the intentions, you know, his values, his morals, his standards, all those beautiful, important things that really are substantial into a very healthy relationship. And these five things are crucial to look for when you're looking for a quality man to love. So before we get started, again, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. And if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to read them. So let's go. Number one, and by far the most crucial and by far the most simplest. And it's so pivotal because it lines everything up into the relationship. It really validates what the relationship is built on. And again, it's very simple. It's very overlooked, very underrated. Does he listen to you? I know what you mean. What's going on? Yes, yeah, he's a good listener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Does he listen to you? There's a difference between hearing you and listening to you. Hearing is going in one in, one in the ear and out the other and not necessarily ever processing the information. They're just more about saying something clever, saying something charismatic, saying something sweet, saying something complimentary. But listening is more about that processing information to come up with a more valid question more of a valid, uh, tangible connection to the next conversation. Let the topics resolve on its own. You know, when you really have a connection with someone, it's because you're actually paying attention to the person. You really validate what they're saying. You're present, you're tuned out on what you're gonna say next, which is very common and natural in most people in their behavior. They wanna think about what they're gonna say next. They're gonna process in their mind what they wanna re respond with because they're so excited. But then again, that interferes with the connection. And the connection is what's built on the relationship because the bond from basically just being a good listener allows the conversation to grow. And when the conversation grows, the other person feels not just uh, secured and stable, they feel they're engaged with a great, beautiful conversation, which leads to the guards, the walls, the defensive mechanisms slowly to come down. And you'd be surprised how valuable and how far a conversation can go to really make the excitement of the relationship seem even more like, oh, my God, we got we got along so well. You know, I always hear from my clients those talks when you have those beautiful all nighters of just talking or those lunch dates that end up going for four hours because you can't keep um, you can't you can't interrupt the conversation because it's so naturally flowing. Those are the best times. Those are the most memorable moments when you really are bonding with someone. And that's based on listening to someone. You know, it's, it's interesting to hear that <clears throat> most people, again, like to put you in a place of what they think you are and mold you into what they think they hear. But you'd be surprised. A lot of people really tell you who they are straight up. A lot of people tell you who they are right in front of your face. But we don't want to listen to it. We want to hear what we want to hear. And that's not really, I'm not saying that's a horrible thing, you know what I'm saying? But it's just more of, you want to give yourself the best chance for a connection, best chance to have that synergy with someone. 
And that plays a key role into not only listening to someone, but respecting someone's time. I mean, we look at it when he was he dismissive during the conversation. Well, that probably means he's going to be dismissive towards your time. Was he dismissive towards your story or not really caring about any interesting questions or engaging um, opinions into what you guys are talking about? Well, that's going to reflect on basically on your time and effort as well. If he doesn't make time and effort in a conversation where he can easily, simply just listen and respond, why do you think he's going to take the time and effort to do other things with actions? You know what I'm saying? So that's a very key role, how the conversation starts from, from listening into what kind of person he is with actions. Again, so, you know, it's not, <clears throat> it's not just the idea of what um, someone looks like, or again, their status, or again, their age, regardless of their age. Um, people still need to work on being better listeners. And you'd be surprised that when you do that, you would realize, you know, that's just a level of full emotional stability, emotional security. And then you feel good about that. You know, so again, an example would be, uh, let's see, he's trying to show off all these superficial elements in a relationship because, you know, women like these nice things, these fancy things, these are nice, cool adventures, but they don't really have the connection. A great example would be in the beginning stages of the relationship. And I hear these stories from so many different clients of mine. And it's so funny. Um, let's say in the beginning, the guy likes to show off the good things, the fancy superficial elements of the relationship, which is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But that shouldn't be his identity. That shouldn't define his only, you know, and best card. Usually that's usually an overcompensation of something. Usually. So when you get that kind of treatment, there's a lot of women who like that and there's nothing wrong with that. But you just should be aware of what kind of relationship you're getting yourself into. I've heard so many stories where the men do these fancy things, but lack the conversation, lack the connection, lack the interest. That's supposed to show the interest. I got you this. That's supposed to show the interest. Look at this beautiful restaurant. Those are, again, superficial, nice, flattering things, but it's not, it's not substantial. It's not, it's not going to define a good, healthy relationship. Those are replaceable things, replaceable qualities. When I hear other stories in the first date or first couple of dates and they talk about those four hour dinners or those times where they're up all night talking and they really bond, that's just something more of a meaningful, great start to a beautiful relationship. You can have the nice things, but again, that shouldn't be the only card or the card. That should just complement who you are on the inside. Again, so just keep an eye out for that. Trying to find a good listener to have a beautiful conversation, to have a great connection have a beautiful relationship. So before we go into number two, please, again, hit subscribe, like, share, and leave a comment. Let's go on to number two. Thank you. Number two, does he pressure you to do things you don't want to do? And I know that sounds very vague, right? But I want to try to simplify that. It's not about necessarily the peer pressure that we've all some form of experience when we were kids growing up, you know, I dare to do that. It's not about that level of peer pressure. It's actually more toxic than that. It's disguised as pressure, but it's really initially stemmed from fear. And that fear which that person has is that they're not very stable or secure emotionally enough to be open or vulnerable enough to speak about their flaws, insecurities, or doubts, which we all have. I mean, everyone has them. You got to own them. But sometimes when this pressure comes on in a relationship, uh, it's basically stemmed from fear, but it's grown into a level of manipulation, a level of control and pressuring you to feel or think or act a certain way. And that is very, very toxic in a relationship. And it's disguised and it's basically sugar-coated to a point of you don't really understand what's going on. You're kind of working from the inside. It's almost like a little parasite who's just slowly sucking all the good out of you and instilling all this fear and doubt into you. And that allows the person to pressure you to do things you don't want to do because you seem like you always have to satisfy, justify, reassure, basically always trying to try to uh, please this need that this person doesn't really want to openly express what it, it's all about. It's more about satisfy this, do this that way. I like this this way. 
And that's just, I don't know, that's just not just controlling. That's just very selfishly unhealthy. That person needs some help because there's no way of a relationship is going to work out that way. It's a one-way relationship. That's basically a job for the person to always constantly feel that pressure. So, you know, <clears throat> instead of they projecting what they can do to help the situation, even help themselves, they rather make you seem belittled. They rather put you in a place of uh, inferior, uh, in, in a place of inferior thoughts and inferior feelings so they feel superior, empowered. And these guys, these men, they always love to have that upper hand. And most of the time, they might do whatever they can to get that upper hand and to make you smaller, to make them feel bigger. There is some level of manipulation of peer pressure from the beginning that got you to that position. And we want to prevent that. If he's putting you in a position uncomfortably, emotionally, mentally, verbally, physically, anything, that's a red flag. That's something you should not put up with. You can disagree. You can have arguments. You can disconnect on certain things, of course. But if there's pressure onto something that you must believe, you know, if it's a religious belief, political belief, spiritual belief, that's not something you want to just look the other way on. That's something that's really going to stem and grow into the relationship. And as like a weed, it's going to just kill everything around it. And that's not what we really want. Do not allow him to pressure you to do anything you don't want to do. And again, I don't mean that just physically. I mean that verbally, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Always look for someone who's really open about what they have to offer, the good and the bad. Because in the, the day, that's what you want. Lay out the cards on the table of who you are, and let's see who wants to play that with you. All right? Don't allow the pressure. And number three, which is one of my favorites and has actually <laughs> the opposite effect of number two. Now, pressuring you, this is the opposite. Does he push you to be the best you? This has nothing to do with pressure. This has everything to do with accepting you for you, loving you for you, appreciating you for being you. But at the end of the day, we all have flaws and insecurities and imperfections. That's just, that's just who we are as human beings, and that's a beautiful thing. But does the person help you uplift you through those things? Everyone always thinks that they're this final product when they're ready to date and they're saying, this is me. Take me for me. Okay. But there are some pros and cons. There are some dark and light. There are some strengths and weaknesses with everyone. Does someone see all of that and still want to be with you and help you through those down times, help you through those insecurities and doubts? Can they help you be the best version of you by challenging you? That is by far the healthiest form of relationship because that's just not about love. That's about respect. That's about appreciation. It's about a lot of selfless intentions and actions about just genuinely helping someone. And that's when you really find that level of not just someone you love, but a partner. And that's what we're looking for, a partner in life, a partner who understands who I am through a bad day, understands who I am when I'm a little doubting myself. And that support system, that stable emotional stability of, of, of like reassurance, knowing that I can make a mistake, I could be vulnerable, I could say something stupid, um, and they're still there for you. They are going to be the best, they're going to push you to be the best version of yourself. You know, we all have these flaws, again, we all have these, and, it, and it's rare to share that and share that with someone you trust. So let's not ignore those things. You know, when the time comes and the relationships open up some more and more and more, you really want to be uh, confident about where you could use some help and where you want to get better at. And hopefully that person's receptive and hopefully that person wants to help you get there. You know, a perfect example would be, let's say, um, ah, OK, this one is from one of my clients. Uh, so the guy is working extra hard because he really wants this promotion at work. Extra hard. And, you know, he's basically going to lack the time to be with you on the weekends, on the overtime hours. And he really wants to get this promotion because he's not only capable of doing it, but he somewhat deserves it. Now, uh, as the woman, are you going to encourage that or are you going to discourage that? Are you going to be patient and understanding about that, that this is not about you? This is not about the relationship. This is something bigger. If he gets that, that might benefit the relationship. Where are you going to stand in that place? Are you all about what's good for you and vice versa? 
And that's the whole point of basically always trying to push someone to be the best version of themselves. Another example of a client of mine is about, you know, weight loss. It's not necessarily about getting the six pack abs or the summer bod and all that. It's more about just being healthy. And if the guy keeps on failing at his attempts to getting healthier, I encourage her and my client to say, well, why don't you show him by example? You're a yoga instructor. Why don't you try to get him to do some yoga? Why don't you try to show some structure in his ways? And let's see how receptive he is. Hopefully the ego and pride doesn't get in the way, but hopefully he understands and appreciates you for you. And that, bo- that, that level of just caring and pushing each other to be the best versions of ourselves, it's never going to end. It's never going to end because we as people are supposed to evolve. I know we don't change who we are from the beginning, but we do evolve. You know, another quick example, someone who doesn't like, let's say, fish. You know, my client jokes about this. He doesn't like fish. He doesn't like fish. Okay. Some people don't like it. I mean, other than being, you know, allergic to it, but it's maybe the fish is you've tried that you don't like. So she tries to offer him a different kind of fish and just to see how open his horizons could be to try new things. And eventually he found one that he liked. And that's the whole point of just being you know, open to evolve. We, don't, we, we say we're not going to change because we don't like fish. We're not going to lose the weight. We're not going to get the promotion. But when you have that support system, when you have that partner, that companion, who says, you deserve that promotion. I'll see you next weekend after you get it done. You're going to get that weight down. And I'm going to help you with that and make sure you cook for you some healthy meals. Or guess what? You got to try this fish. It's something unique. It's something different. You might like it. And you never know what's going to happen afterwards. That's just the level of a connection you want in a relationship. Pushing each other to be the best versions of each other, not slowing each other down. All right. On to number four. Number four. Does he provide for you? And I know we're always going to assume, does he provide the money, the financial stability, financial security? And that's great. Don't get me wrong. But I don't mean that. I mean, does he provide emotional support for you? And now I think in today's world, in 2021, those old traditional ways that the man providing financially is not as common, but, you know, it's still there and I still value it and, and it's a beautiful thing. But I think the flexibility is open to both parties to provide for each other or for themselves. So again, it's not about the security financially, it's about the emotional security. So let me elaborate more on that. Providing emotional support is all about everything I mentioned above, but it goes even further than that. It's a, it goes even further because, you know, um, love is giving, lust is taking. And when you're in a situation where, you know, something's wrong, mistakes, arguments, uh, disagreements. Is the guy always about trying to be right? Is his ego and pride and stubbornness always trying to be right in the conversation? Always trying to be right, the argument. Always trying to have the upper hand in the conversation. That's a problem. That's not providing emotional support. And what I mean by that is that sacrificing your ego, sacrificing your pride, having more humility, to say, I don't care if I'm right. Actually, I want, just want to understand you more. When you're wrong, you actually learn more about the person. You learn more about the situation. So again, love is not a right or wrong feeling. It's a feeling. So when you have a moment of discomfort or an unknown feeling that's based from love, and then you have an argument or a discussion from that feeling, let's say a level of disrespect or unappreciated or, you know, any variety of things. You bring that up to the table and you have the discussion. Do you want to be right? Do you care about that much about being right and winning the game? No, it's not about winning the game. It's not about being right. It's about being understood. It's about being cared for. It's about, again, being listened to, about saying that just made me feel that way. I'm sorry if that's confusing or I'm sorry if that's, you know, even stupid, but I felt that way. And that's where you want the guy to be able to provide that emotional support saying, it's okay. It's all right. You know what? I didn't mean to set you up like that. I didn't maybe contributed to the situation. I got to take some responsibility myself. You know, when it was, when there's, when there's an argument or a disagreement or a separation, you always try to figure out, you know, 
How is that person going to make the, the situation better? You're going to make the situation better. I'm giving all the responsibility to you to make some clarity and some peace and resolve this situation because I don't do that. I don't, I'm never wrong. Now I got too much pride. I'm not calling first. No. And that's just a game of immaturity and ego. And that's just ugly. I don't like it. It's all about, hey, if I want peace and clarity, I'm going to create it. If I want to resolve the situation, I'm going to have to look at myself in the mirror and say, I should take some responsibility that I contributed to this point, to this situation. Right or wrong, I don't care. But I take some form of responsibility and let's see if you can take some form of responsibility and let's see if we can compromise and meet somewhere in the middle so we can resolve the situation. Not add fuel based from ego, pride, stubbornness. Have some humility. Have some understanding that you want to resolve the situation. You know, love is giving. Lust is taking. So again, you always want to look for that emotional support, that emotional level providing from the man. You know, and it's hard because now, you know, you say men aren't sensitive, men aren't vulnerable. That's just an excuse. That's just an excuse not to really try to open and find out if that person is capable of doing that. It's a way of communication. And lots of lots of times mis mistakes happen or breakups happen and heartaches happen because of miscommunication. So be open about these things and not care about being right, not care about being the upper hand or winning the game. Because then who are you going to play with? You know what I mean? Providing emotional support. And number five. But before we start, number five, please, why don't you hit the subscribe button? I'd really appreciate your subscription. As well as a like, share the video with anyone who you think could benefit from this video. Any comments, likes, or input would be great. I would love to hear if you have any questions as well. All right. Here we go. Number five. Is he consistent with how he treats you? And again, this has nothing to do with perfection. If actually anything, it's embracing the imperfections of someone and giving them the benefit of the doubt. And let me explain and elaborate more on that. In the relationship, are the actions, the intentions, the wording, you know, just the communication, are they all consistent from listening, number one, all the way two, three, four, to now where something comes out inconsistent? Something sticks out like a sore thumb. Why didn't he give me that good morning text or that good night text? What happened? Something's up, a little abnormal, a little irregular from him. Well, things happen. Stuff happens. I'm about to say the other words, you know, but stuff happens. And it could be a personal thing, it could be a family matter, it could be just a you know traffic car accident, it could be whatever. But you don't want to always jump to the conclusion it's always going to be someone else that they're cheating on you or they're married or there's something just always so pessimistic about the situation that you always have that detector looking for something to be wrong. Well, if he's been consistent all the way up to this point, then you really have something to base something from. That is his identity. That is what defines him. Not this inconsistent moment. And that's the point of being consistent in the beginning of the relationship and being a good listener because you want to be able to validate who you are from the beginning. When you feel that security of knowing those consistencies of actions and feelings and conversations and listening and that bond and grows and grows, you won't be so triggered to have your guards up or your walls up so quickly when something happens inconsistently. And that's what happens in life. And that's going to happen. That's just how that's just how it's going to be. But again, you want to base your trust, base your loyalty, base your support on what was he, was he doing prior to this moment? Was he consistent? Remember that. All right. So that brings the conclusion to my video. Let's recap the five important things to look for when looking for love from a man. Number one, does he listen to you? Very crucial. Number two, does he pressure you to do things you don't want to do? Are those masked based upon his insecurities and flaws and doubts to pressure you to do things and feel things and say things that you don't want to do? Stay away from that. Number three, does he push you to be the best version of yourself? We're not going to change who we are, but we should be open to evolving. That's a beautiful relationship. That's a beautiful bond. Number four, does he provide for you? Not financially. 
emotionally. And number five, is he consistent with you? Because the day he's not, you will have a consistent level of a foundational base of what the relationship was that makes you feel more secure and not less questionable about, oh, why did he not text me this morning or this night? Because something happens and things happen. But making sure you have quality choices, quality um, traits into someone and getting to know someone from the very beginning from listening allows more peace, allows more understanding, allows better love. Thank you for watching my video. Again, my name is Coach Andres. I'm the head coach of Alexander Cormont at the French Relationship Expert. If you're interested in any coaching sessions, you can go to frenchrelationshipexpert.com slash coaching and you'll see my profile there and I would love to hear from you and I will be doing more and more videos as well. Thank you again for watching and you have a great day.